What's up, guys? I'm here with a new video today, and here we you guys basically a continuation of uh, my last video that said do not quit Yu Gi Oh! because of Zodiac format. Uh, this video is going to be kind of a continuation, but more so talking about adapting to new formats in Yu Gi Oh! And I feel that players of all levels can, uh, can definitely attest to this and also benefit from this. Um, we have gone through countless formats in Yu Gi Oh! Countless formats where decks just reign supreme as the undeclared best deck and a lot of players have either given in and played that deck played that deck from the beginning or had to come up with a completely different strategy to counteract that deck and i feel that no matter what format we go into that's always going to be the case in this game and it's kind of a fun part of the game it's like you can either decide to play the most powerful deck or you can try to be the underdog and try to win with a strategy that is usually not um, that popular but something that works for you and something that completely counteracts what the main deck of the format is trying to do I'm gonna go through some examples uh, just to give you guys not really much of a history lesson but more of a you know we've seen this all happen before so history is going to repeat itself so I'll start with Teledad so we're talking 2008 2007 2008 Dark Arm was running rampant at three it was about $300 each at one point which is absolutely insane one of the most powerful decks in all the Yu-Gi-Oh, the Destiny Hero engine made the deck insane. Stratos, D-Draw, Malicious, you know, you name it, Plague Spreader, you know, it, it was just crazy. The deck was just utterly insane. And it, you know, reigned supreme for a while. It won multiple uh, SJCs. It was the main deck topping. And if you weren't playing that deck, I really don't know. Like, I was a, I was a lot younger back then, so I didn't really pay, play as much competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. But I know for a fact that Teledad was definitely one of the most skillful formats as well as one of the craziest formats because of how expensive it was and the ability to play this deck was just insane dark harm was a behemoth being able to clear boards without even needing to try setting up three darks was so easy with cards like armageddon knight and dark greffer but like any good deck in Yu-Gi-Oh, eventually the ban list caught up with it and it put it you know it just kiboshed it to where you couldn't even play the deck to this day dark arm is at one teledad will probably never be a deck again you had emergency teleport at three you had crab on you had all that stuff now you know the format has completely changed but what happened during that format players adapted players are still here to this day this was 2007 2008 it is now 2017 so we're talking almost 10 years later you're still here in this game how did you do it you adapted whether you want to admit it or not you adapted you found a way to adapt to the format and that's what we need to do every format so we're going to knock dark arm off since that format passed next we had light sworn light sworn was pretty crazy i mean judgment dragon only got out four light swords in the grave for a free summon blow up the field for a thousand seems pretty good to me um judgment dragon was utterly insane this light sworn in general is insane it was a new concept to players milling cards and by doing that you were able to you know set up your graveyard you were able to do a lot of different things and it was a really good strategy because light swarms had the ability to just not really care you had cards that were msts and lila cards that could resummon monsters like lumina you had free summons with wolf you had the ability to just set up your graveyard however you want and then literally just nuke the board for a thousand and continue to play the game or win right there you also had access to three honest which basically just meant you won no matter what oh you want to attack enemy oh, i'm gonna drop honest and win how did players counteract that they adapted. They adapted their main decks. They adapted their side decks. My Body as a Shield became a very popular main deck tech. Being able to single-handedly answer Judgment Dragon for 1,500 life points and save your field sounds pretty good to me. The ability to play cards like Light and Prisoning Mirror, if you weren't playing Light Swarms, lock out the entire deck from doing what it wants to do. No mills, no effects, nothing. None of the graveyard stuff, I guess I can't play. Floodgates existed back then as Floodgates still exist today. But what happened during this format? Players adapted. Side decks changed. Main deck techs became popular people got through the format and light sworn to this day is still a deck is it a deck because of judgment dragon absolutely not light sworn is still a deck in a sense because of minerva and because of strategies that you can play with a rank four build so light sworn will definitely go down as one of the best decks in all of Yu Gi Oh, and definitely uh, judgment dragon will be remembered as the main monster but these days new light sworn judgment dragon is probably one of the worst cards you can play but it's still there for you know nostalgia purposes Next, uh, around 2011, 2012, we moved into one of my favorite formats. It was the Trifecta format, Rescue Rabbit, Dino Rabbit, Windups, and Insectors. I loved, everyone knows, I played Rabbit the entire time. I loved the Dino Rabbit strategy. 
the ability to make Loggy and Dolka, be the ability to use Jurek Guaiba to just make your diet, make your XYZs was insane. It was just a great strategy. There was also windups though. We all know the dreaded windup hunter hand loop that just took away your whole hand, said you don't even get a chance to play Yu-Gi-Oh. And we all know those in, in annoying little bugs that just wouldn't stop, that just kept popping up and just started to just blow up your whole field. So we've been through this format. This is one of my favorite formats. Why I like this format so much is that there was a three deck format, plus there were a lot of other decks that were under the radar, decks like Dark World. Dark World came out of nowhere and just wins YCS Long Beach, the biggest YCS of all time. Tells you something right there, that even with the trifecta in place, it could always be broken. And how was it broken? Players adapted. Mike Ballon built a really good Dark World deck that could literally go in and beat all three of these decks consistently. And that's what every player needs to realize, is that every format you can adapt it's just your decision to do that you either adapt with your main deck or you adapt with your side deck with your side deck you side cards that are able to counteract the main strategies of every format by doing that not only are you prepared for those decks but you expect those decks and it makes your siding a lot easier since this was a trifecta format it was pretty simple if you were playing dino rabbit you were playing the anti-meta strategy you were trying to just set up cards that said i'm going to negate whatever you're trying to do before you even get the chance to negate it cards like fiendish chain became an absolute staple as a th two to three of because it could stop insectors in their track it could stop windups in their track it was insane cards like maxi and effect Veiler saw a lot more play maxi was like a staple at three in dino rabbit and a staple in pretty much every deck because when you played against windups you don't want to get looped you want to max season to either keep cards in hand or you want to Baylor them so that you could finally play on your turn. So by adapting your main deck like that with hand traps or adapting your side decks with counteract strategy, you are able to adapt. Same with Insectors. Insectors just like to pop stuff. So outside of that, you are able to... Um, you were able to continue playing in a format like this, even though it was so defined as a three deck format. So that's another e example from 2012 of how to adapt to certain formats. So I'm going to knock these guys off because we've talked about that. Now we get into, as many players will say, the dreaded Dragon Ruler format. I don't care. I loved that format. I thought this format was one of the best, one of the most skillful, and only players who played the Dragon Ruler mirror consistently actually know what skill means when, it, when I say that because like Neck it was one of the hardest mirror matches to play you had to be really good to win the mirror you also had to be very lucky to win the mirror there was a lot of skill involved because you had to know which colors to set up properly because it was clear blaster and redox were the best but you could also utilize tempest to search your corsesca there were so many strategies being able to crimson blader was everything being able to crimson blader was everything in this format so that was just another thing now dragon rulers without a doubt the most powerful deck in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't care what anyone says. It was definitely without a doubt one of the most powerful decks in Yu-Gi-Oh. Only deck that matches it in my opinion was Full Power Pepe, which we'll get to. I, even though I don't have it here, we'll get to that as well. How do players get around this deck? They either played it, they played Spellbooks, because Spellbooks was in there too, or they played Evil Swarms. Evil Swarm was able to counteract Dragon Rulers because Ophion just said you can't play, and they had a pretty decent Spellbook matchup because of their just brute strength and their ability to play through traps. Now, Dragon Rulers, of course, free summons for days. Free draws for days with Super Rejuvenation and the uh, 7-star sword. How do players adapt to this? Like I said, they either played this deck, they played Spellbooks, they played Evil Sword, or they played an anti-meta strategy. Anti-meta was great at the time. Gravekeepers were a sleeper deck during this format. Throwing a Necro Valley and a Dyna on board was enough a lot of times to just win the game against Dragon Rulers. Iron Wall, you know, was a card. You adapted your side deck. You cited cards like Imperial Iron Wall. You cited cards like Eradicator for um, Spellbooks. You did whatever you could to stop them from playing. One of the craziest things ever is when DNA Surgery at Nationals was $100 for a set of commons because it was discovered to be the best card against Spellbooks. The ability to turn them into dragons and not spellcasters meant none of my Spellbooks worked. It was a crazy strategy. Spellbooks were such a resilient deck because they had cards like Jalgen at their disposal. They had the ability to just lock you out with Jalgen and Fate and just say, try to play. Oh, you can't play? Okay, my turn. I'm just going to keep gaining advantage, and you're just not going to get to play. That's what was pretty crazy about this format. But again, players learn to adapt. You adapted your side deck. You adapted your main deck. You adapted your entire strategy so that you could go in an eight or nine round tournament and be successful during a format that was so kind of just and just shrunk down to these three decks and a lot of other strategies out there but the main focus was on spellbooks and dragon rulers it basically became a two deck format evil swords eventually you know picked up steam and people realized oh yeah this deck's really good against both of these decks so this was definitely a format that if you remember playing it and you played an anti-meta strategy how successful were you with it because you had the ability to be successful with it and i feel that that's something that's great about this game is i feel every format anti-meta has a chance to rise up so again 
we adapted in 2013 to the Dragon Rulers spellbook format, which will go down as probably one of the craziest formats of all time. So with that said, I'm gonna you know let the guys go because we already know Dragon Rulers are banned. The babies are still around. Irrelevant though, we'll never get to play them again. And spellbooks are still around, but no one plays them because the format just isn't right for them. Now we go to a format that I was absent from, unfortunately. I never played Necros format. I was during on my hiatus during that time, unfortunately. But I do remember um, hearing about it. I do remember watching uh, feature matches at Nationals and all that. Necros definitely went down as one of the craziest decks in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. The Dijin lock was insane. The ability to just say, well, you don't get to play. I'll kill you next turn was crazy. The ability, just with all their search ability, all their powerful monsters they can summon and everything, made them definitely one of the best decks in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. I heard that the Necroz Mirror was one of the most skillful mirrors as well, similar to Dragon Rulers. So that was a format I wish I could have played, but, you know, eventually, you know, I'll probably play old formats with friends just to learn the deck. But it'll definitely go down as one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh. Again, how did players adapt? The answer was pretty obvious in Nationals. Play Burning Abyss. Apparently, it was the best deck to beat Necros, and sure enough, it did. All the Necros got beat out, and it was two BAs in the finals. And that alone said that a deck that's been out longer, a deck, because uh, I forgot to mention Shadal, Burning Abyss, and Satellanite format, uh, where everyone had their money on Shadals and Satellanites. People were sleeping on Burning Abyss, but what ended up happening? Shadals got nerfed, Satellanites got nerfed, and eventually Burning Abyss just rose to this like hierarchy of just being the best deck because of how consistent the summons were. Dante was a behemoth. And the ability to just, you know, keep going, you know, keep your resiliency, keep your resources was just insane. And eventually Burning Abyss just ended up winning nationals. It was crazy. Again, it was because people adapted. They built their decks to counteract whatever the strategies were doing. Their side decks were on point. Their main decks were on point. Their ability to clear boards with Fire Lake. Their ability to just keep summoning multiple Dantes was crazy. And this is all before Beatrice. Beatrice didn't even exist at this time. So that definitely shows that over time, you know, the decks just adapt and just revamp themselves to be consistent consistent in every format. So we're going to take this away and we're going to talk about towards kind of the end of this um, the Burning Abyss, Phantom Knight, Cosmo Monarch format that was Nationals of 2016 when I finally made my return to the game. And for the first time ever, I played an anti-meta strategy. Everyone knows I played Cleed Demise, and I played 14 Burning Abyss in all the side events and everything that I played, and I beat them all because I main deck deck cards that could, you know, counteract that strategy. I practiced against against them a lot, and I sided cards that could counteract their strategies and stop them from doing what they wanted to do. Now, Klee was definitely not the best deck, but it was the choice I made at the time. Now, of the three decks, everyone knows that they just duked it out the entire Nationals, and eventually Domain Monarch won. Domain Monarch had an advantage over these two decks in domain itself and also that Erebus was non-targeting it could spin back the Cosmo Dark Destroyer and you could just put enough damage on board to just kill your opponent before they could even do anything so this strategy was really popular it was also the cheapest strategy a Domain Monarch deck cost barely anything you didn't require an extra deck and the main deck basically all came in a structure deck you bought three structure decks added a couple cards there you go you got a, you got a national winning deck and Burning Abyss was definitely there as well uh, leading up to the YCS's, Burning Abyss Phantom Knight won so many tops, so many, it was just insane. There's probably more Burning Abyss Phantom Knight tops than any deck. It's just literally insane how many there were. The strategy was simple. Dante was everything. Beatrice was everything. Beatrice dies. Oh no, I get Pilgrim. It was crazy. The deck kept going. Cosmos weren't without their, their shine. They didn't do that well at Nationals, but they were still there. Dark Destroyer was crazy. Tin Can was crazy. You could play Cosmo Demise. It was crazy. Being able to draw extra cards, being able to just send your Cosmos to the grave, flip call the Honda, bring him back. It was just, you kept going. Going. But again, players adapted their side decks. They adapted their main deck strategies and their side deck strategies to counteract these decks. And it was because of that that they were successful. Same thing with anti-meta players like myself during that Nationals. I usually would not play an anti-meta strategy at Nationals, but since it's what I picked up, I felt that very confident in all three of those matches because I was playing cards that literally said you cannot play Yu-Gi-Oh. Rivalry of the Warlords is a perfect example. One of the best cards I could have played. It literally just did not let the decks play. So things like that i learned as a player even coming back after so long adapting your side deck listening to people's advice and adapting your main deck to counter the the main strategies was always helpful and even if your main deck was built to do one thing your side deck could change all of that and i think that's what was really important so we've been through all these formats and we here we are now in 2017 about to enter the zoo format 
And like I said in my last video, don't quit this game because of that deck. Don't quit this game because you feel that's all that's going to be played. That de that engine can be splashed in so many decks, it'll make your head spin. Just look at the OCG. Look at Yu-Gi-Oh! Organization. You'll see what I mean. But my best advice to you is keep playing, keep adapting, and keep learning. Always keep learning in this game. Always keep be have an open mind to new side deck strategies and new main deck strategies because you'll discover stuff you never did before, and it'll definitely make a difference uh, with you, know, you and your experience in this game. So yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did be sure to leave a like i hope this inspired you to just learn to adapt in every format and learn to you know just not give up whenever a format becomes crazy and becomes power creep there's always an answer to the format the meta can always be broken and like i said anti-meta players it's always your time to shine so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video leave a like leave a comment anything you guys want to say any personal stories on this let me know and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching